Welcome to Equity Mates Investing, a podcast where we explore what's possible in the world of investing. If you've just joined us, welcome. My name is Bryce, and today we're looking at what on earth is going on with Boeing. We're answering a community question about compounding, and Specky McGee returns with an update on the Specky market. To chat through it, as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How are you? I'm good, Bryce. Very excited for this episode. We have a lot to cover and to uh, pull back the curtain. We've just come off eight hours of audiobook recording. Yes. It's a big week for us here. So if our gusto is low... Or if um, our voice goes... Yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> no. We, we've got two more days of audiobook recording yes. after this. Two out of four done. They think uh, this is for the first book, Get Started Investing. So mm. for those of you who haven't bought it and are holding out for the audiobook, great news, it's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been a long three years, but it's getting there. Yes, 380 pages uh, in roughly 20 hours. That's the uh, the expectation from the producer. So it's been a lot of reading, but Ren, it doesn't stop it's the remi- Equity Mates it, train. It reminded me like, it's a pretty good book. It's worth picking up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kudos to the authors. <laughs> yeah. But yes, as you were saying, the content train doesn't stop. Uh, and the content train is pulling into a station near you, <laughs> at least if you live in Sydney. Because Good. we are going live, uh, our Ask an Advisor live event, our Ask an Advisor live on the 10th of April at the Chevelle Cinemas. Yes, it is going to be a night to remember we're bringing in one of Australia's best financial advisors, Glenn Hare from Fox and Hare, to sit down and do a live podcast with him and to give you the opportunity to ask any money or investing question that you might have. We're going to be covering super, we're going to be covering cost of living crisis, mortgage repayments, investing strategies, you name it, we'll be covering it. So come and join us on the 10th of April. Tickets are available at equitymates.com slash events. We cannot wait to see you there. Yeah. Now, Bryce, it's been a big week, so hit it. News and markets. All right, Bryce. Well, we've got to start here in Australia, and the Reserve Bank of Australia has come out with their latest cash rate, and probably a not a surprising result. Kept it steady. Kept 4. it steady. Four point three five percent. Yes, uh, as expected. At least you and I expect this. Um, what? I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, some people, the, some people are expecting that they start cutting pretty soon, but I think like the and our consensus here at Equity Mates HQ is that that's not coming. Yes. So look, four point three five percent overnight as well. Um, there was commentary from the Fed that they might not be cutting rates as early as expected. To be honest, I think so. I think people need to get. <laughs> In the mindset that inflation isn't done. Yeah. Like the US printed a higher than expected inflation Mm. number. Mm. Like wages Mm. seem to be on like pretty strong. Mm. Um, I I made a call in like September last year that we won't see a cut in 2024. And I thought for all money I was wrong. And now I'm like, maybe I'll be right. (laughs) Oh, definitely. Well, I think... Given that the uh, the Fed signaled that they're going to be doing three this year, the market is priced in something crazy like six. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We will likely see a cut, but it's like, yeah, the, the inflation is still in the system. Sticking around. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's a question for you, and I actually don't know the answer to it. Okay. Why didn't they do it on the first Tuesday of March? Why did they meet on Tuesday the 19th of March? Well, Ren, Michelle Bullock has come in and she's making sweeping changes, one of which is rather than meet monthly like they used to on the first Tuesday of every month, they're now meeting only eight times a year, which equates to like every six weeks. And I think since the last time they met in Feb, hence why they're meeting on the 19th of March. Well, that's just thrown my whole internal RBA calendar out. <laughs> you need a new calendar. You know, it's some, good. It's going to be people, less headlines. Some people use like the moon and the stars and stuff. <laughs> I use the RBA calendar to know when the new the month, new month comes hit. around. And nice. now it's going to throw me. Nice. Well, get used to it because we can expect to hear them less. But I do like that uh, she's going to be holding a media conference um, straight after so that people can ask questions. I don't think it was something that old mate... What's his name? I can't even remember his name anymore. Philip Lowe. Philip Lowe was, uh, was very good at. I, give, uh, give the people what they want. You're, <laughs> you're not going to watch one of her media conferences. Correct. Yeah. All right. Anyway, let's move <laughs> on. We want to talk about Boeing because uh, I think this story has... I mean, there's so many aspects to it. People have probably heard about all the plane disasters. 
uh, but we want to talk about it. But then I want to talk about it in an investing lens. Sure. And uh, make the case that it is actually probably going to be a good investment. Okay. As much as it pains me to say this. Okay. Boeing is a company... Uh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Yes. Let's yeah. talk about what's going on first. Yeah, well, they're in a world of hurt at the moment, Ren, because the last few months, I'd say the last 12 months, have been disaster after disaster, headline after headline, um, mainly driven by safety issues that have been plaguing the, <laughs> and plaguing the business. Um First few months of this year, there's been almost a weekly deluge of bad news. A United Airlines flight using a Boeing plane to fly from San Francisco to Oregon landed with one of its external panels missing. Sorry, I Not just, what you want to see. I just can't get over how you pronounce Oregon. <laughs> what, what's it? <laughs> Oregano? <laughs> what is it? Yo, you just... What did I say? Oregon. Oregon. Like Oregon. Polygon. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, focus on the story. Yeah, okay, right. In January, look, a look, door the, plug flew off. Yeah, there's a lot of... Let's, <laughs> let's rip through these. Yeah, a door plug flew off, which led to door plug gate, uh, where the Alaska and United Airlines inspections found at least five more 737 Maxes with loose door plugs. Yeah. And I think these are the doors... You know at the back of the plane when you're waiting for the, yeah, yeah. the bathroom and yeah. you're like, well, imagine what would happen if I ripped yes. this emergency <laughs> yeah. door right now? <laughs> um... um in March, a 265-pound wheel fell off a Boeing 777 after taking off, smashing through a fence into several cars in a nearby parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one, I wasn't sure if it was really a Boeing's fault incident, but at least 50 people were hurt uh, when they were on a Boeing 787 uh, where the plane experienced strong movement. So and they came out afterwards and said that a, fl um, a, an, a flight uh, hostess accidentally hit a button while serving a meal to the pilot oh okay jeez that's, i know gone that's precarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i don't think we can blame boeing for no that. no maybe they should remove they should yeah. make the the, the drop in the case of emergency yeah, yeah, yeah. button a bit further away from <laughs> anyway uh but then there's been a number of incidents that clearly are boeing's uh, attributable to boeing a number of engine fires. Mm. There was one in January in a Boeing 747. There was one in March where shot, flames shot out of an engine mid-flight, a Boeing 737. Um, there is a long list of safety issues really in the last few months. And it echoes back to a couple of years ago when there were all those issues with the 737 Maxes. And literally there were plane mm. crashes literally. as a result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Boeing and safety are two things that don't seem to be going well together on top of all of this if we go down the conspiracy rabbit hole there's this dead whistleblower i know oh that's this is crazy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it was due to testify against boeing's safety record mm. or something along those lines found dead yeah 63 year old um in very suspicious well the family think it is under very suspicious circumstances yeah, yeah. so that is boeing it's there's clearly problems there's clearly a problem in the safety and culture uh, that need to get sorted out. The share price is down 29% year to date. Mm -hmm. Now, fun trivia fact, it's not the worst performer in the S&P 500. Do you want to guess who is? Oh, no. Um. <laughs> okay, well then I'll keep going. <laughs> it's Tesla. Okay. Tesla is down 30%. Oh. And that's after a, even after a recent little bump because they announced they were going to raise some prices. Um, but yeah, Boeing has had a shocker of a year. Boeing is also a company that gives me the ick yeah. in some ways. Yeah. Do you remember there was a few years ago, this was pre-COVID, we spoke to Jesse Felder and he spoke about these, he had an acronym for it, but these companies of financial engineering that were just... Um, borrowing huge amounts in debt to mm. buy back heaps of stock. Mm. It was like them, Caterpillar, mm. a few others. Mm. Um, it strikes me as a company that has been very focused on its financials rather than its yeah, product. safety. <laughs> and that's like, that's me as an outsider, not making any allegations. Mm. But as a company, it's always like, you, you want your company to really be focused on products. What it's meant to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Building long-term sustainable value by building great products rather than building short-term shareholder value with financial engineering. Yes. Well, they're down 29%. You mentioned at the top, though, that this might be the moment that 
provides an investment opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. in a company that gives you the ick. So me saying it gives me the ick <laughs> was a big run up for the but, which is I think at some point this is going to become a great investment opportunity. It might not be there yet, but for people who are willing to take the risk, this strikes me as a meta in 2022 mm. opportunity at some mm. point. The reason being Boeing is part of a global duopoly uh, in passenger airplane manufacturing. It's Boeing, the American company, and Airbus, the French giant, and that's it. You're not, if you're a Qantas or a, you know, a, a major airline, you're not really buying planes from anyone else. So that's one thing. They've got a massive market position. The other thing is that they're incredibly strategically important to the US. Mm. Boeing are one of those companies that the US government isn't going to let fall over. They want passenger plane manufacturing uh, in America. Mm. Boeing also has a lot of national security uh, contracts and, and interest with America. The, the idea that um, the US government would let Boeing fail, not going to happen. No. But here's a number for you. Here's a couple of numbers for you. Boeing, uh, their backlog of orders, 6,189 aircraft. That's close to a record. Their record was in at the end of last year, December 2023, 6,216 aircraft. So there is a massive backlog of orders that is waiting to be filled. It's years of work for Boeing. Now, let me put it in context for you. In 2023... Airbus targeted 720 deliveries of passenger planes. Boeing had a target of 445. Boeing's record year of plane deliveries was 2018. They delivered 806. So that puts that 6,189 aircraft backlog in context. That's almost a decade of work if they're... That's more than a decade of work based on their current run rate. But is this not already priced in? Oh, it's, it's yeah, like, and that's why they've really only fallen 29% when their planes are literally falling out of the sky. Well, <laughs> setting on fire in the sky. Um, but when you think about a company that has, has given itself some breathing room to sort its backlog out, it's a company that has 13 years of work guaranteed mm. and the implicit backing of the US government. Mm. Yeah. Thing is, though. <clears throat> It's really just flatlined for like four years now. Yeah. Like it, it like th this pipeline of activity is not new news. No, no, it's um, not. And, it's, yeah. and, and so, yeah, it's just one of those things where... And, and part, of the, part of the reason why the pipeline is almost at a record is because their production is so screwy at the moment yeah. that they're not yeah. delivering what they expected to. Yeah. So the backlog's growing. Yeah. yeah. So I think when one of the, they had their major mishap at midway through last year or whatever it was, the, the stock fell quite considerably. And I think it had a bit of a run up, but I think now it's fallen back down to that pre-level. So yeah, it is an interesting one. And it's one that I have did thought think about, thought about doing it for stock of the year, but I don't think this is the year that it's... No. Is, it's still got a lot to work out. No, so the 737 Maxes started falling out of the sky in like 2019. Yeah. And the share price fell... Considerably. Uh, yeah, like almost 70%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of has just flatlined from there, yeah, right? Yeah, it recovered a bit and then it's fallen a bit with the new safety issues. It, mm. it recovered almost 100% in the bull market of 2021. Then it crashed again. Mm, mm. Pun not Pun intended. Yeah, yeah. It fell 50%, risen 50%, now it's fallen again. So it's been pretty volatile. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's like... Am it's I not going anywhere. Am I confident that Boeing's going to be here in 30 years? I'm pretty confident. I guess Will I have made money on the, the stock? Two. I don't know. But what's Airbus doing these days? Uh, Is it even listed? Yeah, 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 it's listed over in France. Up 15% year to date. Um, I mean, nothing crazy, like up 40% in the past five years. Definitely outperformed Boeing. Yeah. Considerably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so nice. I think that's... Uh, well, watch this space. They've got work to do, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a classic example of like people who are brave enough to take the risks on unloved stocks sometimes pick big winners. Mm. Like Meta's up three hundred and fifty percent since November twenty twenty two. The question is whether this will be one or if we'll keep falling or flatlining. Um, 
but yeah, it's not a company that's doing well at the moment. No. All right, Ren. Well, it's time for. Let's ask the community. Equity mate. Hey, equity mate. Oh, I just had a question. Hey, right, hey, friend. I've got a question. Your question. Okay, well, this question comes in from Alicia via email. If, if you want to ask your question, go to equitymates.com slash contact. You can ask us a question. We can get your question answered by one of Australia's best financial advisors. But Alicia asked, I always hear that compounding is the eighth wonder of the world, but no one ever really explains it. Can you actually explain why it's such a wonder? Nice. Bryce, why is compounding good? (laughs) If you've just joined the show and you're wondering what on earth compounding is, compounding is when your money grows at a consistent rate year after year after year after year and exponentially grows your wealth or exponentially grows whatever Mm. is growing. But in this instance, we're talking about our wealth. So think back to your general maths at high school where you would do linear growth, which is an example is saying six plus six plus six plus six, 24. Whereas exponential growth or compounding is the same as saying six times six times six times six. Yeah, what is it? Which is, can't do it on the top of my head. 1,296. There you go. So in simple maths terms, that's an example of how uh, the compounding year on year gets exponential growth. And so this is why it becomes so powerful because when you extrapolate this over a very long period of time, you start to see your wealth just grow exponentially. Yeah. And this is how, you know, Warren Buffett is a classic example of this, has been investing for, what, almost 70 years now. And the bulk of his wealth has come in the last decade or so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a look at it actually in the first book, Get Started Investing, and it's something like 99% of Warren Buffett's wealth has come after the age of 50. Mm. I think at the age of 50, he was worth 100 million. Now he's worth 100 billion. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and the reason that compounding is the eighth wonder of the world, the reason that it's so powerful is it's not you're not just making money on your initial investment. You're making money on all the previous money you've made. And that's why over the long term, as you make more and more money and then that money starts making money, you can start to get really incredible exponential returns. Yeah. Now, we've um, pulled out a few examples to try and, I guess, illustrate the numbers behind compounding, a few examples to sort of bring it to life. Because it is actually really hard to comprehend when you start off investing the power of this over 40 years. So I think putting numbers to it is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here's my first example. Uh, If you invested $200 a month for 30 years at 10%, you would have $456,000. Nice. Can't complain with that. If you extend that 10 years, so you go from 30 years to 40 years, Mm -hmm. it's not linear growth. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, you extend the timeline by a third, so you add a third more to your money. Mm -hmm. It's exponential. Mm -hmm. That extra 10 years takes your return from $456,000 to $1.275 million. Nice. An extra third of time triples, triples yeah. your result. Throw in another 10 years and you... Phew. I know. <laughs> How about this one? So if I invest, if I, if I leave investing late, if I am trying to play catch up and I only have 10 years until I retire, inv- if I invest $1,000 a month for 10 years at a 10% return, I end up with about 200 grand. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, not bad. That's you've turned $120,000 invested into 200 grand. Mm. If I double that timeline, so if I go to 20 years, so I, I don't have to play catch up as much, I've got a bit more time, how much would I need to invest each month to get that same 200 grand? Is that, that's the question. That's a question for you, yeah. So you double the timeline. Double the timeline. So you're saying 1000 a month for 10 years at 10% gets you 207 But if I'm saying I'm investing for 20, 20 years, how much would I need to invest each month to get 200 k no, Nowhere near 1000 <laughs> well, Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say 50 bucks a month? No, no. That's, a- that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So the, your mind initially, like the, the, if you're thinking linearly, you would say, well, if you double the timeline, yeah, then I halve the amount I need to invest. Mm. So rather than investing a thousand, I would invest five hundred. That's sort of like first instance response. 
But that's not thinking exponentially. You actually can just invest a quarter of what you would do. Okay, nice. $260 a month rather than $1,000 a month gets you there. So you double the timeline and then you can just quarter the amount you invest. Which is why so, we say get started as early as possible. Yeah. So again, it's this like this exponential um, growth the longer that you give it. Mm. Here's another example to try and illustrate it. So if you invest $100 just just once, you invest $100 for 10, at 10% a year for five years, yeah. you'll, mul- you'll have $161. Okay. So you'll multiply your money by 1.6 times. Yeah. If you invest that for 10 times as long, okay. so 50 years rather than five years, again, if it's just linear growth, rather than 1.6 times your money, you would get 16 times your money. Mm-hmm. You're 10xing it. That's not the case. You would actually multiply your money by more than 117 times. Nice. So that $100 invested once would worth, be worth more than $10,000. Wow, wow. Well, this is certainly illustrating the comp- the effect of compounding, but I think it's also illustrating the effect of compounding over a very, very, very long period of time. Hence why I reckon every week we say, no matter what you want to start with, getting started right now is going to make a significant difference to your portfolio over the next 40 years. A hundred percent. Well, why don't you close it out with some actual real world examples of how this has worked over time? Okay. So if you'd invested $1,000 in Australia in 1980 in the all ordinaries total return, by 2019, that $1,000 would be worth $71,800. Not bad. Not bad. If you'd invested that $1,000 into the US markets, the S&P 500 total return, in the same period of time, by 2019, that $1,000 would be worth $86,984. Love it. Now, you, we can plug these numbers all day. I think if you want to put get your hand around it, the Money Smart Calculator is a, a good place to go. We'll put that link in the show notes. But hopefully that starts to illustrate the pretty mind-blowing numbers mm. behind compounding, especially as you extend that timeline out to 30, 40, even 50 years. So there is a reason why people call it the eighth wonder of the world. Thank you for the question, Alicia. And as Ren said, if you have a question, hit us up at equitymates.com slash contact and we'll make sure we answer it uh, on our shows. Now, we're going to take a very quick break. And on the other side, we have Specky McGee returning with an update on the Specky market. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Equity Mates. We've covered off what on earth is going on with Boeing and a community question on compounding. And to close out this episode, we're bringing back for the first time in 2025. First time in 2024. Yes. No, 2024. 2024. None other than Specky McGee. For, for people who are new to the show, Specky McGee is our correspondent from the world of uh, Speckies and shit coins. Yes. The part of the market that people love to have a punt on. Um, we don't spend a lot of time talking about it, but for luckily Specky is our correspondent from that world. Mm. So let's see what he's got in store for us today. <laughs> Yes! So good to be back. So okay. good to be back. Specky McGee, what have we got for us? All right, how are we going, guys? Good. We're good, we're how good. Are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good to be back, finally. Um, Last time you were dressed as a rocket ship. Yep. An inflatable like, rocket ship. Yeah. Now you're dressed as the... F- Spaceman? Spaceman, yeah, just who flies the rocket ships. Okay. We're, so we're off to the moon. Um, so it's so good to be back on the show. All the Specky McGeezers would be pretty excited that crypto is back as well. Yes. They would be, yeah, yeah, Very yeah. So, so good to be back. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, crypto's back. You've got Bitcoin and Ethereum, like, both almost at all time highs. Um, but you don't look, you don't worry about that Bitcoin and Ethereum. You're looking a bit higher up the risk curve. I am, I am, but yeah, so, so they're both at almost at all-time highs, which is good. So yeah, long-term listeners and Specky McGeezers would know that I've actually picked two crypto picks in the past. Do you guys remember them? Uh, Banano. Banano. Got it. And... Uh, yeah. It was the, um, the, the, like the gaming one? Uh, close. It was it's Seller Network. That was the one I outsourced to Fiverr. Oh, uh, yes, that's um, right. <laughs> so, yeah, like, you know... Low with, impact pick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've done more DD this time. So, you know, with the whole crypto boom at the moment, it's, it will, you'll be pleased to hear that they're... Unfortunately, they're still down, but they're not down as much. So, <laughs> Banano's down 7%. Seller Network's down 50% from the call. 
So, you know, it just shows you, you still need to be calculated with your picks. Even in a, even in a bull run, a super cycle, you got to pick the right crypto, okay? That's right. So, any questions? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we want to, we want to hear yes. what's been uh, coming across your Next desk. Next question, well, yeah. I like it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Next question. So... The pick What's I the have record? today, the financial advice I have today, <laughs> is <No. laughs> uh, the, the pick for today is dog with hat. Ticker uh, D I F. Yeah. Are you guys familiar with this one? Yeah, this is this has had a big run. Yeah, it's had a big run. It's on the Solana blockchain. All the Solana coins seem to be doing really well at the moment, uh, including Solana itself. Um, so over the, the last few days, there's been a bit of a cool off, but Solana is going strong. Um, it's meant to be faster, cheaper, more secure blockchain than um, is, you know, the alternatives. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few other ones. Like um, Dogecoin is actually on its own block blockchain. I did a, did a bit of analysis between the <laughs> different meme, meme nice. coins. Um, so it's all about Solana at is the it? moment. So but wait, is the pick Solana? It's dog with hat. Dog with hat. With hat, which is the main meme coin on the solana blockchain so we're, okay so would you not just go solana so for nah, context you want more gains for context you want more gains yeah. Hold okay. on. for context solana is up like 600 percent in yes. the past 12 months yeah so they're pretty good guys yeah very they're pretty good yeah. what's I mean, dog whiff up look solana is so good <laughs> that sam bakeman freed has been telling prison guards to get on solana <laughs> really you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. how's he still tra- how's he still trading from prison yeah. or no, is, he's, just he's giving not tips. he's giving tips yeah He's giving tips, which is just, it's just a funny thing to imagine. Um, Here's the question people are asking, um, Specky, is, is it too late? Yeah, that's my yeah. question. Is it too late? If Specky McGee is talking about it, no. it's run 600%, dog with cat, whatever it's dog called. Dog with hat. Dog <laughs> with hat. <laughs> dog with cat. Um, it's, it's already run. It does feel a bit toppish, doesn't it? It well, does. No, it, dog, dog with hat is uh, down meaningfully from its all-time high. Um, it was at 340 in, what, a week ago? No, a few days ago. And now it's at 240. Look, with all these fluctuations, I've still been sleeping like a baby. Um, <laughs> I've still been sleeping like a baby. I'll sleep for two hours. I'll wake up and cry. I'll sleep for two hours. I'll wake up and cry again. Nice. <laughs> um, so, anyway. So, dog with heart is up 13, 1,300% in the past year. It's going strong. It's, it's, it's going more strong. than 10 bar. Yeah, I and the other piece of news... Um, so the dog with hat community came together and through through <laughs> dog, that? just like holders of the of the coin okay collectively donated 700 grand to put the image of the token sort of logo on the Vegas orb for a week oh yeah, <laughs> so yeah the is that all it costs 650 grand for a week yeah for anything but i think it cycles through other, oh, other okay. brands as yeah, well yeah. right so they say that it's meant to go live on 19 April, so we should see some price action there. But I think, uh, you know, this is the punt you want to take. If you're a Specky <laughs> McGeezer, if you're a Specky McGeezer, you want to ride the Solana momentum, dog with hat is what we're on here. Are you in? Absolutely. Can nice. I <laughs> Can I ask for your take on another Solana meme coin that I've been hearing a bit about? Sure. Uh, have you heard of Peng? I haven't heard of Peng, no. Oh, mate, you got to get with Peng. Peng's the next dog with heart. Oh, okay, maybe maybe <laughs> it's too late. Like, what, one, of the, <laughs> one of the responses to the Vegas Orb news was like, this is Done. just such a top signal. That's top. Like, the yeah, fact that, yeah. you know, we're, we're paying 700 grand to get on this orb. It reminds me of uh, Elon going on Saturday Night Live. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah, everyone yeah. thinking that would be good for Dogecoin. And it yeah. went just, down after. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's yeah. like, that's yeah. it's going to blow up. It's so, no longer a meme. Yeah. So maybe we've got to sell on the 19th of April. That could be it. But yeah, I don't know. I went on the crypto moonshot subreddits and there's all these spin-offs. Frog with hat, Pepe <laughs> with hat, Sheba with hat, Hank with hat, Dog with fork. Hat with bag. Someone in the office. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is just this is crypto stupid baby. Shit. <laughs> just after we talked about long-term compound investing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten percent a year. 10% what? A year. Someone in the office suggested wolf with balls. That that's genuine. Bryce is talking about dog with cat now. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> dog with cat would probably be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I reckon. So that's my pick. Dog with hat. Wait, but we got to be clear. It's whiff, like a W I F. Dog, dog with, with hat. hat. Nice. Yeah. 
<laughs> nice one, Specky. Well, we're certainly going to the moon. Coming in as an astronaut, dog with hat, dog with hat. You've heard it here first. We appreciate you coming in and uh, looking forward to the next one. Thanks, Specky. Thanks, guys. All right, well, that, let's you have this music play us out. That brings us the, to the end of another episode of Equity Mates. Remember to pick up your tickets to ask an advisor. Rumours are Specky McGee might be making a True. guest appearance, True. Uh, depending on how dog whiff cat's gone. <laughs> Tune in tomorrow. We're speaking to Kerry Craig about all things portfolio construction and home country bias. We'll ask him where dog whiff hat fits in that portfolio. Uh, but until then, thanks for listening.